In health news, there's new evidence that casts doubt on aspirin's ability to prevent a first heart attack. Dr. Philippa Cheatham has more on this story and other medical headlines. She is an attending physician of urology at Renthrop University Hospital and teaches at Stony Brook University. So good to see you today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about this aspirin thing. We will jump straight to it. Uh, so it's been long understood and believed that aspirin can help prevent a heart attack, but why... Uh, uh, not the first heart attack, the second one. Well, this is what we call primary prevention. If you're preventing a heart attack, you've never had a heart attack, and that's primary. If you've had a heart attack and you want to prevent other cardiovascular problems like heart disease, stroke, that's secondary prevention. And this study is saying that aspirin is great for secondary prevention. Mm. But if you've never had a heart attack, then aspirin may not necessarily be any more beneficial than patients who don't take aspirin. Mm. And just help people to understand why aspirin is effective in the situation. Well, aspirin is a drug, it's called an antiplatelet drug, and platelets make the blood sticky. So if you take an antiplatelet drug, the blood is less sticky, it flows more freely, it's less likely to clot, and it's clots that result in heart attacks and also strokes. So that's one of the ways that aspirin can help prevent heart disease and strokes. Okay, and uh, so then what are, since it is an anti-sticky medicine, I love that characterization <laughs> of it. <laughs> oh, some might call it a blood thinner. What That's are the right. side effects then? Well, you know, aspirin for prevention of heart disease, we usually prescribe low-dose aspirin, a baby aspirin, but for some people, that's not always a safe medicine to take, particularly if you have issues with your stomach. It can cause bleeding, gastric bleeding. Some patients are allergic to it. But on the whole, you know, if you have an issue of heart disease, you really should discuss the pros and cons with your doctor. So if you're on aspirin, don't just think that this study means you can stop it. It has huge potential, huge benefits for many patients, but there are, like all medicines, pros and cons. And, and to that point then, is it important to, to get a specific recommendation from your doctor to take a preventative dose of aspirin? Can just any old, you know, 50 year old guy uh, take aspirin and think it's going to help prevent a heart attack? For well, him. first of all, aspirin is just one factor in, in the whole risk prevention. So it's about eating healthy, not smoking, controlling your blood sugars. But you must discuss it with your doctor and also know what other medications you're on to make sure it's safe for you to do so. Yeah, very, very important there. Okay, let's move on talk about uh, controversial cholesterol drug. Okay, Vitorin, we've all seen the commercials for, for them. At first, uh, as I understood, and I didn't even know this, had was uh, dismissed by cardiologists years ago years ago. Uh, let's talk about a little bit why there's been a comeback for it. Right, so the drug first went on sale in 2002 and actually it was kind of, they got into a little bit of trouble in 2007 because they actually played down some studies that showed that there was no difference in heart attack prevention compared to what we call just a statin alone and that was played down. The drug companies did not accept blame but there was a $700 million settlement Ooh. because people who had shares in the drug were concerned. Um, but interestingly, there's been new study that's come out that showed that it probably does have the edge on the other typical cholesterol drugs that are statin alone. So Vitorin is a combination. Yeah. So it reduces heart disease, it reduces strokes, it reduces hospitalizations. And so what's the new research showing? Then? Well, the new research shows that it has a better effect than just taking a statin alone. So they've done a comparison study and it's a combination drug that reduces not just the cholesterol that you absorb, but also the way your body converts cholesterol. So it has a dual effect. Mm -hmm. So this could really have a big impact on, on the industry. I'm sure the shareholders are very happy. <laughs> <laughs> It could really help today, them sell a whole lot today, more. It could yeah. change tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> is this a drug, though, that you would recommend, particularly bearing in mind how they got in trouble, uh, what was that, about eight years ago or so? Well, the drug potentially can have some issues with interactions with other medications. It can also have some issues if you have liver disease. So, again, you have to ask your doctor. You have to tell your doctor what other drugs you're on. But for the right patient... This is an excellent drug at reducing cholesterol. All right, let's move on to our last topic before we run out of time and show. And that is this re research showing restricting calories having a particular effect on, I don't know if it's, it's neurologic function or cognitive ability, but brain on the brain. Tell us about it. That's right, not new research. We know that blood flow to the brain is important. We also know that neurotransmitters, chemicals that send signals to nerve function are important. Sugar affects both of those. If you have furring up of the arteries, you can get issues with strokes, 
We also know that a lot of sugar in the diet has been associated with Alzheimer's, other dementia. So cutting down on calories, particularly wasted calories, high sugars, is a good thing. And, and it helps in what way? Because this, this research shows that uh, it can help keep the brain sharp, so that means you think clearer? Or? Well, what it means, it's basically working on neurotransmitter function, the way the brain's chemicals work. We know that- well, So you feel better. You do feel better, but we also know that sugars cause a lot of inflammation at the cellular level. And also the more blood that's going in, the more oxygen that your brain gets, it's a good thing. Blood flow is important. We know diabetes is a risk factor for strokes and heart disease. And have they quantified cutting it by how much? Because I'm sure that there is a range and then it can be too extreme. That's right. It's a great question. This is actually a mouse study. So they're still doing some research on humans as well. Mm -hmm. Not just about sugar, cut down on smoking, cut down on saturated fats, get on your exercise bike. It's all that stuff that uh, you medical all folk been stuff. telling us all uh, along. All along. I think you. I think you. <laughs> all right, Dr. <laughs> Philip Cheatham, thank you so much. It's always good to see you. Thank you. Come back and see us again soon, thank okay? You. All right. And that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for joining us. Do join us again for another edition of Arise America. I'm Debbie Turner Bell. Have a great day. Bye.